Well, this morning I present breakfast with a view and what a view it is today as well. I think the gods of the weather, well, they may have listened. Fingers crossed they've listened. Anyway, this morning, a big stage of course demands a big old breakfast. And check it out, this is not gonna disappoint. Oats and granola, mixing it in with a bit of the pear. I mean, I am addicted to the kind of, oh, baby food style pear and apple they do here in Switzerland and France. Obviously a croissant and the nitroglycerine of the honey. Washing it down with a green tea. And fueling the ride today, here we have in the larger bottle 80 grams of carbohydrates by way of beta fuel. Also the electrolytes in there, electrolytes in the smaller bottle and a little bit of caffeine, just for the boost you'll understand. In terms of the food, each of these bars has been pre-cut just to make life a little bit easier. This one's got about 40 grams of carbs in it. This 20, this 15, this 15, that 20. Also a Colombian energy block. These provide a really good boost and very fast digesting carbohydrates. I'll definitely eat one of those midway through um, the second of the climbs today. In terms of the gels, one with caffeine, one without. And then Hort Route provide the option for a race bag. So after the first 2,300 meters of climbing at Barrage de Moray, here is my race bag. And in it, I've got another bottle with the electrolytes and 80 grams of beta fuel. Also a couple of treats, a croissant obviously for me, a few solids in there, plus a replenishment of gels and bars. Won't be needing quite as many as the first part of the race because the final climb well, I say the final climb is only 14 and a half kilometers and a thousand meters of climbing, but it definitely won't need all of that to get through it. Anyway, onwards. Andrew, Reinhardt, Paul, Paul. We got the crazy Canucks. We got Jack. See you later, Jack. Prior to the Hort route, I've done a tad too much. Okay, way too much training on Swiss Fen top. And from all that, I reckoned that my repeatable power on the climb was about 230 to 240 watts. A long way to go. So the intent today was to complete all three climbs averaging 220 to 230, about 3.6 watts a kilogram. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah. How's it going? Not bad, not bad, just trying to get a powder dry for yeah, absolutely. later bits, I guess. Well, good luck with it. Having previously met Michael at the top of the Telegraph during La Mamotte, it was great to reconnect on the climb. And here, he was taking a little bit of time out from his duties as a dad, husband and a doctor. It took 43 minutes to climb 800 metres over 10 kilometres to an altitude of 1300 and I felt good. For Kareen. With average power of 235 watts and fam of 1060. On target. Go on, Piglet. Go on, Phil. Luxuriating in a Belgian draft. Cheers, gentlemen. And I felt good going into the main course. Barrage de Moray. Here we come. 14 and a half kilometers of grind. And this for sure is a cyclotourism without mercy excursion par excellence. All the way to a glacier with views over the Matterhorn, requiring us to ascend 1,000 metres over a further 13 kilometres all the way to 2,350 metres. But the final 5.7k averages 9%. It isn't trivial. I assumed that as for the first time, the power would gradually rise like a phoenix from 210 all the way to 225 to 230. It didn't. I couldn't find a nice rhythm and my lap average resolutely stayed manacled to 210 watts. You've dropped him. You've dropped him. Do a wheelie! <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling Phil? It's hard work is this? Almost hard work. There, almost there. It was amazing to see Scott, Natalie, Pierre, Alain and Angela and better still I saw a fair bit more of them as the climb continued as you'll see.
Car up. Are you going to do sticky bowls? <laughs> yeah. You might, I might have to get a tow from you. You can hear from Scott now that the oxygen is noticeably scarcer oh. at more than 1,500 metres. And the perceived exertion, it's higher. Good. You're almost there. Thank you. It looks quite easy from here now. Is it? Yeah. Only one little bit of red. So I'll be climbing. I think it's nice and flat after the uh, okay. like water level. I can report that it didn't flatten off. As you'll see, this is part of the final 5.7 kilometers, average gradient 9%, but it comes at 1,800 to 2,300 meters elevation. So grinding that low, low cadence in and out of the saddle is the name of the game. The tunnel. Two words. Claustrophobic, unpleasant. Well done, Piglet. Thank you. Nice work, mate. Well done, Phil. Well done, mate. Cheers. Well done. At 210 watts, it took an hour and five minutes with VAM of 960 to get to the end of the tunnel. Are you running? Ah, 90. I'm 90. Oh, cool. How are you feeling? Oh, that was emotional. A real struggle. Overall, two hours, 20 minutes to ascend 2,100 meters over 35 kilometers. Yeah, Average yeah, power 205, normalized 2. And what a place to meet Pierre Alain, Angela, and that, and Scott as well. Scott, from about the 57 YouTube channels, yeah. Instagram, TikTok. I'm going to start a new running at altitude one. <laughs> like I can do five meters and I'm gassed. It's incredible to see you all. Yeah. Yes. Thank you ever so much for the support. And boy, did I need the support on the climb. I was hanging out. Well, my derriere. We are nearly in France. So I heard some naughty language. <laughs> some naughty words coming out of Phil's mouth. Yeah, it was, yeah I, was, I was mumbling a few. I was mumbling a few. <laughs> now, if there is one thing I adore, it is a picnic and Pierre and Anne Angela they do it with some style look at the Swiss chocolate but look at that the lattes oh a cappuccino and the la oh the macchiato macchi 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 what's this this is a, a Swiss delicacy yeah so this is a fizzy drink which is made from a byproduct of milk and better than the cafe au lait the pan of chocolat and the waffles oh my word I'm okay. <laughs> Look at this, this truly is picnicking without mercy. You'll forgive me that, won't you? We just need to Look at that, you've got the cheeses now, as well as the croissants. And look at this. Look at that, a beautiful, beautiful French bread. They just called it bread here. What are these? Well, this is how your bladder expands when you go up to... <laughs> that's your stomach. Yeah. As it goes look up to... It. And I've got my croissant storage here. So I do want a second croissant on the descent. There you go, check that out. Top tip for the hort route. Will it still be there? <laughs> That's a tease. <laughs> the Matterhorn is over there. Good luck. Good Cheers, luck Scott. In the wind. Cheers, Nat. Cheers, Cheers Angela. Cheers, Cheers, Cheers Piranha. See you all soon on Sunday. Yes. A very nice bottle of wine and a grill is going to go down. Yes. After the most exceptional cafe stop I've ever had, and a lot of fun, it was time to descend and take on the 14 kilometer climb ascending 1000 meters to the finish in Cran Montana. This is a lovely ascent by most standards, but context matters. And as you've seen, Switzerland has a very high bar. So this is, well, it's the ugly sister in comparison to Vecaran and Barrage de Moray. And in unison, my effort up here, it wasn't pretty. There was plenty of looking down at the Wahoo Bolt, a bit of grimacing, the Tony Martin face went AWOL, and all in all, the effort was, well, agricultural. I was hell-bent on staying above 200 watts. Nice one, Paul. My time, 63 minutes, averaging 203 watts. The van was 900, so 100 below my target. And I was more than ready for my tea at the end. Also wondering, how on earth am I gonna get on a bicycle tomorrow? 
I was in all kinds of trouble on a final climb to Crown Montana, but Paul kept me honest. Cheers, Paul. Honest as possible. He kept me honest. He didn't let me drop below 200 watts. I reckon about 206 for that climb, but dear oh dear, that was harder than I'd envisaged. Well, the bike needs a clean, but first, priorities. Fish finger sandwiches. Round two. Does life get any better than fish finger sandwiches? Maybe beans on toast, but answers on a postcard. One minute ago, the rain, or shall we say it is profuse. The level of concern is high. Sanesh is proper steep for about 15 kilometers. That's after the first climb of the thousand meters of elevation. Here we go. When they say let's go and you're at the very back of the peloton, it isn't let's go, it's let's go in about a minute's time. With the climb to the glacier of Senech on the horizon, 23 kilometres, within which 15 kilometres is unrelenting steep gradients, I wanted to leave plenty of energy in the tank on the first climb to Anzair, so I targeted 220 watts over the 12 kilometres and 1,000 metres of elevation. It's exceptionally beautiful for the first third, an absolute pleasure to ride, even in the rain. Here's Michael again on his beautiful Bianchi. The amazing thing about the Hall Route events is whether you're racing or like me you're just surviving, it's that it's perfect when someone comes along and you realise you're evenly paired. I thought Matt was going to leave me for dead, but his style, well it's powerful with surges and that compares to my relentless but consistent grind. So we traded places and hit a nice little rhythm on the second half of the climb. Yep, the weather sure was grim and it was equalled only by my thoughtless decision to open up the excellent Castelli Idro Pro rain jacket and the Garba jersey and as a result I got another chest infection come the Monday. It took a cold and wet 61 minutes to complete the climb at 221 watts and irritatingly I was just below my target van, 989 it was, not that I knew at the time, my cadence it was much lower than I'd have wanted, 77, even though the gradient was only 8%. Thank you very much. I'm going to start right after the construction, OK? It was decided that due to the adverse weather conditions, it was too dangerous to do the final 10 kilometres of the Senech. Therefore, the route was shortened to 13 kilometres, ascending 900 metres, and that included the final 5 kilometres at 10%. Switzerland, it does long and steep well. a very beautiful first five kilometers and having held back a little bit on the first climb my power was coming on stream nicely nothing earth-shattering mind but north of 220 watts and I was actually starting to feel half decent both in and out of the saddle
in terms of lessons learned, I think it's better to go a little bit lower on your target power than maybe you originally envisaged until you get your confidence up. Plus, the choice of gearing is critical. Even with a 30 on the back, I was getting disrupted and low cadence on the steeper gradients. That's my car. And finally, it's the impact of altitude on athletic performance. These are my key lessons on a multi-day event in the mountains. <laughs> oh, and not doing stupid SH1T to catch a chill. Better to overheat. Yeah. We completed the 12 kilometers ascending 800 meters in 46 minutes, averaging 227 watts and 990 VAM. Once again, the thousand eluding me. Well, today, a little step forwards, inching faster on the climbs. Hopefully tomorrow at the time trial will be another step in the right direction. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, was it a relief when the rain stopped after about three and a half hours. Good luck, Eva. Horut Ambassador. Cameraman. <laughs> I'm with the illustrious company. Don't drop me too early. Hey, yeah. Fifteen kilometre route ascending twelve hundred and fifty metres all the way to the Col de Cran Montana, eighteen hundred metres above sea level, and doing this the Hort route way. Nice and hot. I.e., for the most part, avoiding the main road and using the back roads through the vineyards. It's safer and very much more beautiful. Paul and I had wrecked this on a Thursday and formed a plan: go out hard for the first three point six kilometres where there's lots of steep ramps. Then ease off for three and a half kilometres where it's a bit more forgiving and drain the tank on the final eight kilometres at 9% gradient. Nice one, Bert. Ali Ali. Thanks, mate. Nice to be cool. Have a good day. You too. My legs and lungs were continuing to improve and I was spurred on by the prospect of a glass of wine and a grill at Pierre and Anne's place in Vecaran. It was really good to gradually reduce the gap to these gentlemen and then stay with them for much of the cruising section. Confidence eating on the bike is starting to come back. Albeit, my mum would probably prefer a nicer table with handlebar manners. Yes. Sorry, thank you. Appreciate Believe that. it or not, once upon a time I was actually a decent navigator with a map and a compass nice even in the dark. Looking strong. Matt, who I sparred with yesterday, now comes barreling past, but I stayed resolute to my plan, knowing that if I conserve a little bit of energy here on the cruising section, it will more than pay dividends on the steep section. Well, more than a steep section, eight kilometers at 9%. Hey, 
pace is as long as steep here. And now Matt is back in my sight. And as Hannibal from my childhood heroes, the A-Team would say, I love it when a plan comes together. Albeit, full disclosure, he did drop me at the end of the first climb the day before. Overall, this was decent for me and I executed on the plan, averaging 259 watts for the first 14 minutes and then eased off to 230 for the next 15. And then gradually drifted back up the power to a consistent but maximal 237 for the final 37 minutes. Overall, 240 watts average for one hour, seven minutes and a VAM of 1100, plus a small improvement in my placings to drag me up to 44th place just behind Matt over the three days. All right, come on, push it till the very last second. You've got this, this is your finish line. Congratulations, Mark. Michael, how'd you go today, sir? Yeah, I wanted to go out for a dream day, but you know, the, the meter started to add up, but like at the end, really happy. Just, you know, last 2K, just close my eyes and get to the line. Well, well done. Thank you, and you feel well done. Enjoy Nice, sir. post-ride nutrition and decisions, decisions, decisions. I'll probably eat them both. Also, as a side note, left-right balance, 50-50. Always happy to see that on the Wahoo Bowl. No greater cause we can help than the race, not just to end HPV, but to eradicate HPV. Hey, Tristan.